Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you six selections for Saturday's race. Now before we get into them, I just want to go through a couple of things with you. Now first of all, I want to apologise for not doing a video on here over the last couple of days. On Wednesday evening I couldn't record uh, because I was busy and then last night I thought that quite a few of the meetings would get called off today because of the weather and I was right because only Kelso survived. So yeah, I just didn't, uh, I just thought I'd have a night off and uh, wait for the weekend so yeah that's why i didn't do a video over the last couple of days also as well a couple of other things um if you want to check out my latest betfair column i'll put a link to it in the description box below giving you a couple of tips for the weekend we had a couple of t uh, winners from the column last week so fingers crossed uh we can have a good day there and also as well if you want to listen to the latest episode of the in the saddle podcast where i was previewing the itv races with Izzy Phillips and Liz Batchelor. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. So yeah, enough of all uh, the promos. Let's get into it then. Six tips for tomorrow's racing. And we're going to be going to Ascot tomorrow for the Swinley Chase in the 225. And this is where one of my extra tips of the day is going to be coming here. And that is Regal Encore for Richie McLernan and Anthony Honeyball. He's currently available at 14 to 1 with William Hill at the moment, who are offering an extra place in this race. They're paying four places. And I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection now when i was looking through this race uh yesterday obviously you've got fiddler on the roof at the top of the market i thought he he was probably the most likely winner but i just thought carrying a big weight round here could make him vulnerable and at the prices i want to take him on and then when i was looking at regal encore you always know he's going to run well here he's a four-time course and distance winner but i just couldn't believe he now gone down to a mark of 140 he was actually dropped six pounds for his last run and if he retained anyway near near his old ability i just couldn't let him go off this kind of price he, he he's run very well like i say as got over the years he won this race a few years ago and even last year he was able to finish second behind captain chaos off a mark of 150 he's now 10 pound lower even on the seasonal reappearance he didn't run that badly here behind larry off a nine pound higher mark so i can't believe the handicap has eased him that much over uh, a short period of time and more crucially as well he's had a wind up and i just wonder if that might liven him up he's previously won after a wind up before so i think that might be able to help him i just thought he was quite a big price and some of the horses at the top of the bet and i just thought were shade vulnerable might not like conditions as well aren't particularly core specialists where we know rotary glanco more often than not runs his races anthony honeyball's team are going okay i just thought 14 to 1 you know most of the time he is going to run a solid race and yes even though he is 14 maybe that is factored into the price i just thought this could be maybe his last hurrah and i wouldn't be at all surprised to see him get involved at a big price so that's going to be my first selection of the day we then go to haydock to the 240 for the william hill grand national trial now haydock are having um an inspection in the morning but fingers crossed they get the green light but in the 240 i thought uh, another old boy black lion could be the way to play here for harry and dan skelton he's currently eight to one with betfair we're paying four places on this race i'm going to recommend 0.5 each way selection here now i just thought this horse was maybe a little bit overpriced and even though he was in the doldrums for a while you have to say over the last uh, couple of months he's really turned a corner and even probably when he finished sixth in the grand national last year you know he's been coming back to somewhat of his old self he finished uh, fifth in a decent handicap behind the likes of snow leopardess earlier in the season and windsor avenue that form looks pretty strong and then he took his form to another level when he won over the course and distance here in a veterans race he was well gambled for that race and then he was a winner last time out when he absolutely hacked up destroying the two amigos we know he stays the trip the ground should be fine he was actually raised up to a mark of 145 for that run um last time out and i just thought there could still be a little bit more improvement to come yes he's a 13 year old but there's again a few in here that might not like the conditions tomorrow don't necessarily handle the track i just saw the prices he was quite a big player and if he, if he is going to be ridden prominently tomorrow we know he's got the back class to go well in this race and for me i think he's going to go fairly close in that 240 at haydock so that's why he's going to be one of my extra tips of the day we then stay at haydock for the 315 for a potence qualifier and i think i found one here a bit of a price another extra selection and that is Flash Jack for uh, Richard Patrick and Henry Daly. Currently available at 12 to 1 with Skybet at the current time of recording. And I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here and get four places there with Skybet. Now, uh, this horse, uh, Flash Jack, last time um, we saw him, he finished third at Chepstow. But I think you can put a line through that run. I just don't think he necessarily handled the track. Most of his best form has come 
on flat tracks, including the likes of Haydock, where he's a previous course and distance winner. In fact, that was the last time he actually won a race over this course and distance. And then he went up to a mark of 140, which he was always going to struggle off. But this has been his lowest mark now for some time. He's now down to a mark of 125. Now, I know he's a 12-year-old, and yes, he, he hasn't done much over the last couple of years. But I just thought in a race of this nature where I didn't think too many were ahead of their mark, and he's been given a chance by the handicapper again, this old boy could maybe outrun his odds and go close. Richard Patrick as well hasn't ridden him on his last couple of starts, and him coming back aboard is definitely a positive. I just thought he wouldn't be too far off the pace tomorrow. He'll handle conditions. He's got a nice low racing weight. It's his last mark for quite a few years. I just thought he, he, he was screaming out for a big run, and that's why he's going to be another extra section on the day. We then go to my nap, which runs in the 3.45 at Lingfield on the all-weather there, and I thought Pirate King for Ryan Moore and Charlie Fellows was a little bit overpriced here, even though he is uh, 11 to 4. Um, I'm going to recommend a one-point win bet here. Now, I think the key to this horse is his last uh, winning handicap mark. He's remaining. He's remained off the same mark of 96, which saw him run a good effort off this mark last time when he finished fourth over this course and distance. He wasn't um, beaten that far at all. There was pretty much a length between the first four, um, four home in that race, and he was taking on the likes of Celta Car, a uh, protected guest, and I just think he didn't quite get the best passage in running but I think tomorrow he might be able to step up on that he's very likely raced for his age and he always seems to seem to save his best form for the weather he's won over this course and distance four times during his career and like I say he's off his last winner mark of 96 I think Ryan Moore is also a massive uh, positive for him Ryan Moore seems to uh, do quite well at, at Lingfield during the winter over the last uh, year or so he's ridden quite a few winners and I think this is a really positive jockey book. And I think the race will be run to suit as well. I think Celtic are Desert Emperor, a couple of all that like to be quite handy, might set a good tempo for him. And I could just see him coming with a late run and uh, getting the job done on the line. And I just saw 11 to 4. I thought it wasn't a bad price at all. And that's why he's going to be my nap of the day in the 345 at Lingfield. My long shot of the day then runs in the 410 at Ascot. I'm going to take a chance here with Smurf Yankee. For Joe, uh, Joe Anton claiming seven. He's riding for Chris Gordon here. Now, this horse at the current time of recording was available at 16 to 1 on Skybet, who are offering five places on this race. Now, this horse, Smurf Yankee, I know Chris Gordon thinks quite a lot of him, but he's had some hard tasks. He's been carrying some big weights. But I think the, the, the key tomorrow could be having his first crack at this uh, longer distance. It's going to be the first time he's tried three miles tomorrow. But he's always shaped, in my opinion, as though he wanted this trip. He's always been a bit of a, a, what you might call a slogger. And I didn't actually think he ran that badly last time out when he finished eighth in a class two handicap that was very competitive for the grade. You have to say this is probably a slightly easier task for him tomorrow. He dropped a couple of pounds to a mark of 125. But with Joe Anderson claiming seven, it's going to be the lowest weight he's actually carried for a little while. He's been carrying some top weights and some of these uh, handicaps. And I just think that uh, he's still very lightly raced. I know Chris Gordon, like I say, thinks a lot of him. He ran him in the Tolworth um, last year. So, yeah, he's definitely a horse they've always thought a lot of. It. I think he'll handle the conditions. He's proven it in the past that he likes plenty of juice in the ground. I don't think he'll be ridden too far off the pace. And I just think with Joe Anderson as well, claiming that seven pound, that he rode a winner for Chris uh, the other week at Fontwell in an amateur's race. I just think that that, that seven pound claim could potentially make all the difference for him. And that's why at 16 to 1, I couldn't let him go off that price. The yard are going well. And yeah, that's why he's been my long shot of the day. We then go to my next best, which runs in the final race at Newcastle on the 7.30. And that is one heart for James, uh, Sam James and Grant Chua. Currently available at 11 to 2. Sky Bet, who are offering the extra place here. I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here. Now, this horse is very well treated now. He's now £10 below his last win in Mark. And his last win came at Wolverhampton about this time last year when he was previously trained by James Ferguson. He kind of lost his way after that, but he's a much better performer on the all-weather. And I think in both of his runs this uh, this year, he's just not shaped that badly. Last time we saw him, he finished fifth over this course. Get the, 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 the best run. He, he had to come and be switched inside, and he kind of wanted to be down the stand side rail in that race. But he was staying on at the end. Five furlongs maybe could uh, maybe stretch him, but I think he'll be doing his best work late on. He's won over six, seven furlongs before. And I think he could maybe have it a little bit untapped potential. I didn't think it was the strongest of races for the grade as well. And I think I, I think he'll go pretty close uh, in the 7th in Newcastle tomorrow. And I'd be disappointed if we couldn't get a good run for our money. So that's the, the last of the six selections 
for tomorrow's racing. If you're still enjoying these videos, remember to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe here to my YouTube channel at Lucky Loader 15. If you want to follow me on social media, you can do, but my handle on Twitter is at Lucky Loader 15. Same on Instagram as well. So if you want to follow me on there, please go and do so. And also as well, if you want to find out a little bit more about myself, my website is www.chrisloaderracing.co.uk. So please go responsibly and we'll be seeing you again soon.